Hi, I'm Morty Oberstein, head of SEO branding here at Wix, and today I'm excited to share with you Wix's site inspection dashboard. Before we get started, the data that we're about to explore together comes directly from Google and its Search Console URL inspection API, making it all the more valuable to you. Let's get started. Once you're in your Wix dashboard, head over to Marketing and SEO and click on SEO Tools. Once there, you'll see an option for the site inspection dashboard. Go ahead and click on it. The first thing we need to do is actually pull the data and inspect the site. For this to happen, and again, because we're pulling directly from Google Search Console, the website needs to be connected to Search Console. If you click Inspect Site and the site's not connected to Search Console, you'll see an option to get started. Welcome to the Site Inspection Dashboard. Here you'll get valuable information that will help you understand what Google has, hasn't, can, and can't index. That's valuable information because if Google hasn't or couldn't index one of your URLs, that URL cannot show on Google search results page, meaning your potential clients, customers, and readers will never see that content through Google search. Let's start off with the top level information that's offered to you in the report, which will help you get an understanding of your site's overall health in terms of Google indexing and beyond. If you look at this particular website, we found 99 pages on it. Of those 99 pages, if we head over to the status overview, which will tell us whether or not Google has indexed or not indexed or has excluded pages from the index, we'll notice that 63 of these 99 pages are valid. That means Google has been able to index them and they have indexed them. If we go further down, for example, you'll notice zero URLs are invalid. This means an invalid URL is a URL that Google can't index. Perhaps you've actually blocked Google from being able to index that URL. And we have 36 URLs that are excluded from Google's index, meaning they have perhaps found these URLs, know that they exist, but have decided not to put them in the index, which again means they can't show on Google's results page. Moving over, we have the top status details. This will explain the status overview. In other words, these are the reasons why a page perhaps could not be indexed or hasn't been indexed. For example, in this case, 61 URLs have been submitted and indexed via the sitemap while going all the way to the bottom. Two URLs have been indexed, but not through the sitemap for a total of 63. At the same time, 23 URLs are not known to Google. Google is not aware that they exist and therefore cannot index them and therefore cannot show them on the Google search results page. Eight URLs are crawled, but not indexed, meaning not only does Google know they exist, but Google's actually crawled and read the page and has decided not to include it in its index. And five have been discovered, but are currently not indexed yet. Moving over to mobile usability. This will tell you if the pages on your website are mobile friendly. Mobile friendliness is part of Google's algorithm. And on top of that, having a mobile friendly page can help your users better convert and access the information on your web pages. Here, 63% of the site's URLs are mobile friendly, while 1% of them are not, meaning they are invalid and need a fix in order to make them mobile friendly. While this top level information is very helpful in understanding the overall health of your website, in order to make specific fixes to your website and better optimize it for Google search, we need to understand what's happening at the page level. For this, we have the full report, which lists all of the 99 URLs, as well as their page name, type, their status code, for example, are they valid? Has the URL been indexed by Google? Their status details, which is the explanation around whether or not the page has been indexed, hasn't been indexed, can or can't be indexed, as well as whether or not the page is mobile friendly, and if the page is eligible for a rich result, which we'll get to shortly. What do you do with this information? Well, let's start with an actual example. Here we have a blog archive page that has been excluded from Google's index. Why? Because it's unknown. Google doesn't even know this URL exists. And that's actually how it should be. 
It's an archive page. This is not a page I want users to see. It's not a page that is relevant to users. It's not a page I want Google to show on the results page. So not every time you see a status close of excluded, is it problematic? Let's help her find an example that might be problematic. If we scroll down here, we have an actual blog post that has been excluded from Google's index, meaning Google has not indexed it. Now we need to know why. The first step is to look at this explanation. It's crawled, but currently not indexed, meaning Google has read the page and now has decided not to include it in its index. This is a page I very much want Google to show on the Google results page. So this is a problem. To get more information, click on the view more button. This tells us that the page again is crawled, but not indexed. It does tell us that the page is in the sitemap. It tells us the last time Google crawled the page back in February of 2022, and it shows our canonical tags. What you might wanna do here is click on learn more to find out the reasons why Google might crawl a page, but not index it. Here you'll be directed to our knowledge base, better explaining what the reason for Google not indexing, but crawling a web page is. Generally speaking, pages that are crawled but not indexed might be because there are similar pages on the website that are already in the index. Why would Google include two very, very, very similar pages in the index? What value is it for users to see two of the same pages? In such a case, Google might say, we will index this one page, but exclude the very similar page from the index. Alternatively, it might be because Google has read the page and has decided that there's not much value on the page. Perhaps the content is too thin. Perhaps there's really no content there at all. In such a case, it may make sense to fill out the page's content, offer a better content experience and more useful information. Let's jump back up to mobile usability. If you remember, we have 1% of the site pages being invalid. Let's find one of these invalid pages and see what's happening. If we scroll down here, we see that this is very much, again, a page that should be mobile friendly. It's a blog post. I certainly would want this to be mobile friendly, both from a ranking point of view and just from a user experience point of view. However, I need to understand what's making it not mobile friendly. We'll click on view more again. In this case, we can see clickable elements like buttons and links are too close to each other. If the elements are too close together, you might inadvertently click on one thing and not the other thing which you intended. This makes the page unfriendly from a mobile point of view. What we wanna do on this page is space these clickable elements out more and then resubmit the URL to Google in order for them to recrawl it and see that now is mobile friendly. For more information about mobile usability, you can again click the learn more button from the panel be, to be directed to the knowledge base. Let's explore the last element here. Rich results are enhanced results on the Google SERP. These are results that Google offers all sorts of visual enhancements that perhaps could make your page, your results on the Google results page more clickable. Not every page is applicable for a rich result. To be eligible for a rich result, you need to have properly implemented structured data markup. However, not all structured data markup is supported by Google. For example, here, my blog post here does have structured data markup on the page, but the markup that is on the page is not markup that Google supports, meaning there is nothing for Google to use to show an enhanced and more visual organic result. In this case, there's simply no data, which is not a problem. However, there are pages on this website that do have structured data added to it that are or would be eligible for a rich result. Let's have a look at one of those. Here's one of the site's main pages. It's the site's about page. This site has valid structured data markup on it that would make it eligible for a rich result. Let's click on the view more button in order to explore this a little bit more. This page has been submitted and is indexed. It is also mobile friendly via the valid indication under mobile usability and under rich results. We see the page does contain FAQ structured data, meaning the page is eligible for a rich result. Let me show you what that looks like in this case. Here's the page on the Google SERP. You'll notice, unlike other results on the Google results page, 
also known as a serp. This particular result has an accordion listed underneath it. It has questions, and when clicked on, shows answers to those questions. This is a rich result. We can again see the validity of this markup via the site inspection dashboard where it says FAQ and that it's valid. Last thing, to see the full report on Google Search Console itself, simply click on Google Search Console here at the bottom of the panel for any URL, again, listed in the inspection dashboard. Here's what it would look like in this case. As you can see here, and just as we saw within the site inspection dashboard within Wix, the URL is valid on Google. It's been submitted and indexed. It's mobile friendly, and it contains FAQ markup, which is again, valid. Thank you for joining me as we explore the site inspection dashboard in Wix. I hope you make use of the information within the dashboard to better optimize your site, for increased traffic from Google results and to help you grow your business overall.